Let's start with a real high level view. Then we're going to move on to the code. And after all that, we will go through it one by one and actually explain exactly what's going on in this code. Let's start with, we're going to have an array. It's going to be three, two, six, five, one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select our pivot. In this case, that's going to be our first element. There are other ways to do this, but for this tutorial, we're just going to go with the first element. It's going to be three. So we're going to go through this list one by one. We're going to look for anything smaller than three. Two smaller than three, we're going to move two to the, to the left. Six, no. Five, no. One, yes. So five is going to, one's going to go here. So that puts three in the middle, two and one to the left, and that leaves six and five to the right. Three is now going to be in its last position. It's not going to move anymore. So we're going to move down to our next step array. This is the left part of it, the, the two and one. We we'll start with two. Anything smaller than two, we're going to move it to the left. And I'll put one on this side, as we can see down here. We're going to move on to the right side, which is six and five. Anything smaller than six, we're going to move it to the left. When we look at that when we're done, we have one, two, three, five, six. Now, if this array was longer, we would just repeat this process. So eventually two would go in the middle. We'd have some on either side. Same thing with six. We have six in the middle. We could have other numbers on the other side. We could just repeat this entire process all over again. Hopefully that's clear. Let's move on to the code. It's going to be fairly similar to this with a couple caveats just because it's JavaScript. All right. In my file quicksort.js, let's start with the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need a function. We're going to call it quicksort. And it's going to take in an array. And here we're going to set start is equal to zero. The default start is going to be zero. And end is going to equal our array dot length. Spell length. Minus one. So the reason we're going to do the minus one is we need to be able to index it. So we're kind of compensating for the index of the array versus the length of the array. All right, first thing we're going to need is we're going to need our base case. So we're going to say if start is greater than or equal to end, we are going to just return. So with this kind of we're going to serve two purposes. One, if you send an array that was empty, this is just going to return. And two, as we run our recursive recursive function on this, we're going to end up using this to catch the end of it when it's sorted and, and return the function. So next thing we do is we need a pivot index. Now it's going to be equal to, we're going to end up making this function in a minute. Our partition and our partition we're going to pass our array our start and our end this is going to be how we first decided where three went this is how we're going to figure out where to where to split the array in half next we remember that we did it to the left side and the right side so we're going to need our left and our right so we're going to this is our left we're going to do pivot index minus one so everything in the pin deck we're going to start at zero we're going to start at the beginning and we're going to go up to but not including our pivot and we're going to move on call that again our start this time is going to be pivot index plus one we go all the way to the end. So we're going to go all the way to our pivot index. We're going to skip it, and then that's going to be our start. And we're going to run all the way to the end. If all this works, we're going to return our array. A little space between there. So far, everything's looking good. Well, let's move on to our partition. All right, let's go up here. Let's create our partition function. Let's call it function partition. It's going to take in our array. 
start and our end. Pivot. That's going to be equal to the start of our array. Like we talked about we are going to grab the first element of that array. We're going to call that our pivot value. And remember, this can change. So if we started here, start is going to be the pivot index plus one, which is going to change our pivot value to that. Let's dynamically generate it here. Let's let our swap index. So we're actually going to track our index a little bit here. At least where things are at. Equal start. And we're going to do our for loop. So I is going to equal start plus one. We definitely want to skip first one. So in the beginning of this list we would start at 3. We definitely don't want to run our for loop on 3 so we're going to do start plus 1. And well I is going to be greater than oops, sorry well I is less than or equal to the end and then let's just increment it. Perfect. Right here, let's increment our swap and day. Ooh, nope, nope, nope. Okay, sorry, got a little myself. So, <clears throat> if our pivot value is going to be greater than our array index i, then we want to increment swap index. And if I is not equal to the swap index. Let's perform our first swap. So here we want array I and our array at the swap index. And we just want to flip these over here. So that's going to be array swap index and array i. So all we're going to do is we're going to take whatever is in the i index and we're going to put it in where the swap index is at and everything in the swap index. We're going to put it in the i index. All right, if this is not making complete sense yet, don't worry. We will explain this, and this is not extremely intuitive, if you ask me. So swap index, I equal start. Let's go ahead and form another swap here. Let's swap our swap index with our array element at the start position. That's going to be, we're going to swap that with array start and our array at the swap index. All right. boo-boo here. This should not be inside of our for loop. It should be outside of our for loop. And afterwards, let's just return our swap index. What that does is our pivot index is going to become a swap index. All right. All right, let's test it out. Make our sample array. It's going to be three, two, five, six, one. Let's just console log out what this is going to look like. How many 
place that's going to use the word array when I meant to say, or R when I meant to say array. Okay, there we go. One, two, three, five, six. We sorted the whole list. Now, for the next part, what I really want to do is I want to be able to very clearly show what happened. So up here, I'm just going to console log the array every time we run through. I'm going to add down here a little divider. just so we have something to space it out and we can differentiate our sorted array with what's actually going on inside of here. Let's try to get through this more line by line here, kind of line by line, at least, at least to solve understanding what we're doing. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna call quick sort. We're gonna run through it. Start's gonna be zero and it's gonna be four. That's gonna hit our first console log. We're gonna go past the space case. We're going to hit the code index. We're going to call partition with our array. Starts going to be zero, ends going to be four. That's going to be our first call to partition. So we're going to come in here. Pivot value is going to be three. Our swap index is going to be zero. And then we're going to run through our for loop. And in our for loop, we're going to have two numbers that are going to be less than three. So we're going to increment our swap index. We're going to swap them. Then at the end of that, our swap index is going to be two, still going to be at zero. And at that point, we would have one will still be here, and three will be here. And we're going to swap those, those two. And that's going to leave us with a final array of three, two, one, five, six. Or, I'm sorry, one, two, three, five, six. And then we're going to return two because our swap index was two we found two items smaller than three after that we're going to call our quick sort on our left side so that's going to be right here I've, I've noted all this out so we can kind of follow along we're going to pass an array of one and two because that's going to be our sub array in a sense starts going to be zero and it's going to be one it's going to be our second console log right here and we're going to call partition on just one and two. So we're gonna run through our partition on one and zero. Our for loop, for loop is not gonna really find anything smaller, so it's gonna skip. It's gonna increment the index though. And then we're gonna come down here, we're gonna run through this, and we're not gonna find anything, so we're gonna skip. And we're gonna return our swap index. And I believe somewhere in here I have the swap index is gonna be zero. I believe it should should be one. I think I got my note wrong here. So if we were to return one here, and then we we now call here with a one, one minus one equals zero. So start zero, one zero, we're gonna fail the base case. We're gonna call it again here, and we're gonna fail the base case once again. So now we have, sorry, that should be our, when we failed this base case over here, we're going to fail this base case. It's going to be here. Now we're going to move on to the right side. The pivot, 6, 5. Starts going to be 3, ends going to be 4. We're going to have our fifth console log, which is going to be here. And we're going to call partition with our pivot value is going to be 6. Our swap index is going to be 3. Because we're at position 3 in, in the array. So 0, 1, 2, 3. We're going to run our for loop. It's going to increment the swap index to four. And it's not going to actually do anything here, though. It's going to get kicked out and swap index four is not going to be equal to our start three. So that is actually where we're going to get our last swap that takes place. And we are going to swap five and six. We can't see it yet because our console log doesn't cover it. But we are going to return three, and our array is now one, two, three, five, six. That's right here. 
Now we're going to call quick sort one more time on the left side. And obviously it's going to fill the base case. Three is not greater than or equal to two. And then we're going to call on the right side. So that's our sixth, our, our sixth call. It's going to be right here. We're going to call it once more on the right side. And again, we're going to fail our base case because four is greater than or equal to four. So that's going to kick us all the way out. That'll be our last console log. And then we are just going to return the array, which is going to show right here, our sorted array. I know it's kind of a lot to go over. I think I'm going to post these notes to the repo. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out or leave a comment. Maybe I can clarify some of them, but with a little bit of persistence and some frustration. And like I said, a lot of coffee breaks, this will make sense. And it's actually a really cool array. Thanks so much for watching.